Welcome to the Building in Decentraland video series. These videos are recordings of the live sessions of the inaugural class offered by the VR Academy, which is a school within Decentraland University. My name is Carl Fravel, and I'm the instructor of this course. These videos are largely unedited recordings of the live class sessions. The descriptive text provided below this video includes information about Decentraland, a virtual reality on the blockchain, the Decentraland University and its schools, including the VR Academy, and the course materials for this course, including the lessons and assignments. I hope that you enjoy studying these materials and that they help you to become a very capable builder in Decentraland. Today I'm going to reverse things and that I'm going to uh, go through the lesson material first because there's not a lot of it. And I'm going to leave the time open for questions on problems people are having or on how to do certain things. Um, and I have a, a few things to share. So um, the purpose of this 10th uh, and final lesson in the class is to basically encourage you and assist you and give you ideas about how to take your skills into action um, in the world in terms of building things with other people or for other people. Um, and, uh, you know, basically hanging out your shingle and saying, I, I can do this stuff, uh, where can I help? Um, and I think that the, really the starting place is to build a portfolio and you can always improve it as you develop more skills. But, you know, you've built some scenes, some of them are interesting. Um, you might take them or even uh, enhance them some uh, or take your game port, uh, game jam scene if you're making something for the game jam and put it up on Zite now and you know maybe make a website that links to some of your work and it says what you can do um, and uh, you know if you put some scenes into the world you have links to those that people can visit and um, you know, think about some of your professional profiles like LinkedIn. Um, there's some uh, sites that are kind of somewhat specific to this kind of work, especially Rialto. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but it's um, uh, DCL Plaza's uh, founder's uh, second uh, offering for helping people find work and find people who can do work for them. So it's kind of a matchmaking site, Rialto. And then there's some existing, uh, you know, uh, longer term, been around longer uh, work matchmaking sites, Upwork, uh, Fiverr R, or Fiverr R. I have no idea how to pronounce that, or Ethlance. Um, and you can, on all four of those, you can create a profile and say what it is you can do. Um, there is a, uh, uh, on the Decentraland Discord, uh, server there there are hiring channels uh, building channels SDK channels you can uh, get active there uh, show people your work answer questions uh, make yourself useful and and valuable and people may decide to um, uh, engage you for some work um, and uh, so make use of, of this these skills that you've developed um, get to know people in the community. Uh, I think that a lot of the, of the districts probably need help and there's, there's thousands of landowners. Um, so, and I'm betting that a lot of them bought land without knowing exactly what they were going to do on it. So you can brainstorm with them. You can help them design a scene. You can help them build a scene. Uh, you can act as a, uh, a, a building agent for them. Um, and then you guys have been doing a really great job of working with each other and helping each other. Uh, I hope you take that forward and work to, together as collaborative teams. Um, you are certainly welcome to continue to use the VR Academy channels uh, as appropriate for um, proposing projects, connecting with each other. Um, uh, it's fine. Please do. So um, that would be the assignment is to um go do these things um does anybody have any question about 
how to get started on that or, you know, kind of the philosophy of it or just have a discussion about any of that. You know, you might want to take a look at um, some um, existing uh, portfolios for an idea. I'm going to um, pause the video here a second and find uh, the portfolio of one of my modelers. Um, it's um, very impressive work as a modeler. It, it's not a general purpose I can build a descent plan, but it's just a good, good example of a, of a really good portfolio. Hold on a second. Let me find that. So um, here's the uh, portfolio for, uh, um, let me just double check. Is my uh, screen visible again? Yeah. I am? Okay. So um, yeah, I ended up hiring this uh, young man who's, uh, uh, at the time I hired him, I think he was still a, a high school student. Um, he's built some of the materials for the conference center. Um, and uh, hold on, <laughs> seems like I have a cat every day during the video. Here we go. All right, sorry about that. Sound effects, that was a real cat. That was not a sound effects uh, track. So uh, Uh, this is just an example of how one might put together a portfolio that looks really good. It's really high quality modeling work here. And um, yeah, just play his demo reel. I, th I think this will work. So, uh, you know, I, um, I'm, I met, he goes by IO, or I met him uh, uh, a year and a half ago um, in one of the Discord channels. Um, he just kind of had offered to help, and I invited him to make some items for the conference center, and, and I paid him for them. So uh, that's just kind of how it works. So uh, I encourage you to think about what skills you want to offer. Um, you may not feel strong in some of them, but you may feel strong in others. So um, make yourself a website. WordPress is great for it, um, easy to use. Uh, and, you know, put up links, uh, images. Um, and you absolutely could use a, uh, somebody asked this question in the chat here. Um, if you could use the uh, ADCL scene as an uh, interactive portfolio, absolutely. It's a great idea. Um, uh, the question is how will people find their way to it? So, I mean, if it's well positioned in the world, people may find it anyway, but you still may need to bring attention to it, uh, make sure that people know how to get to that URL to get to it. So um, use one of those, uh, you know, job, jobbing sites or uh, postings in various Discord channels. Uh, you could approach district leaders in some of the districts that seem to be underdeveloped and ask if they need help, um, things like that. Any other questions or thoughts? Okay, so um, 
We have a few things we can talk about today. First of all, does anybody have any questions from the recent assignments? I do have a request from one of the students to look at something together. And uh, we'll, look, we'll look at that today. If anybody has, has anything they want to um, have me look at today, uh, just post it in the chat here. Okay, so uh, let me just, I just want to review a few things. First of all, about the game jam. Um, the uh, submission deadline has been announced. It is Monday night. Uh, today is Saturday. We're talking about two days from now and then a little bit. Uh, Monday night at midnight. Eastern time. Um, the form, uh, I've, I've posted it in the, in the channel today, um, right there. Um, that's how you submit your Game Jam entry, um, UV Lab, for the to look at it, or um, a site now, um, sort of static deployment um, that they can, they can visit. Um, and uh, you need to, they're going to close the form at midnight, uh, Monday night. So if you're building something, uh, get it wrapped up and submitted before then. Hi, Carl. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the submission for the game jam. Is there a possibility, for example, to deploy on the Carl's playground on our uh, parcels and just send them the coordinates? Yes. Without Yes, you can deploy it in world, either on the sandbox or in other land, and send them the coordinates. I, I believe that um, either a deployment somewhere and or a link to um, the code, or both, is what they're looking for. But yes, I, when I said now, I think that's because their announcement to the, um, to the world about the game jam, you know, most people don't have access to the sandbox, but uh, I think that would be fine. Um, okay, yeah. If you do deploy to the San, uh, to, to Zite now, consider what you're doing about the um, uh, coordinates. Make sure you either provide them a full URL with coordinates to where it is in the sandbox or adjust the scene.json file before you deploy it to now so that it deploys it to zero, zero, um, one way or the other. Otherwise, if you deploy it, to some other coordinates in now, but don't uh, provide those coordinates as part of the URL, then they'll see a blank space at zero, zero when they, look, when they go there. So be careful about that. Any other game jam questions? Hi, Carl. Yeah. How's it going? Um, could, could you maybe go over real quick the, uh, the, the structure that you'd need if, if you wanted to deploy a scene from from your website um how like uh I'm, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm following how the url should be set up like the subdomain yes um yeah let me uh, i was going to kind of notate it here um if you have your own website and you're able to push files to it uh, the first thing you do is you uh, do the dcl export like that uh, with lowercase d. Um, and that creates the export directory, right? Um, you, you would copy the contents of that to some folder in your web server. But to create a URL for it, you need, you're going to need to do one of two things. Either have this export be the only thing on your website and that, that it's at the root of the website. Uh, in other words, let's say your domain is my domain. Um, so maybe your URL would look like this. And then uh, I would recommend that you put it at zero, zero so that that's sufficient, but you could also put that, uh, you know, the, the, I don't think I have this right, but um, I don't have it. I'm doing it from memory, you know, equals uh, X, Y. Um, Don't trust that I have that spelled right or anything. But the, the point being that you can, if, if it's your, um, the only thing on that website, you can just do it that way. However, if it's, um, you know, if you have other things on the website or you want to do multiple scenes, um, uh, oh, we have audio problems. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see what's going on there.
I just want to see if I have uh, good connectivity here. It seems pretty good. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I'll try not to talk too fast. That might help. Um, if you want to have other content on that website or maybe multiple scenes, then you would need to create subdomains on your web server so that you might have like this. Um, and if you, you know, if you have a web service, I don't know where you might be hosting your website, but um, you know, something like GoDaddy or Ionos or something like that, you can set up subdomains. And for each of the subdomains, you get to define where, which folder on your web server uh, gets served when you, when you hit the subdomain. So you would create these, you know, you'd map it to something like a public um, or www or something, um, scene one, um, or some other directory where you have the scene, and you'd say that is what should be served by um, that, that subdomain. So that's how you do it. Um, the actual way you do that varies a little bit on who your hosting uh, uh, provider is. So, so the, the position part of it where you have, uh, so say I have the subdomain, that position would be at zero, zero? If you don't specify it, that's correct. It'll load with zero, zero. Now, th they're starting to put some, some stuff in that pays attention to the coordinates in the scene.json file. And I've seen it work sometimes and not other times. So um, I wouldn't trust it. I would, if, you're, if, you, if your scene is not at zero, zero in your scene.json file, then you're definitely gonna wanna put the, the, the rest of this URL up here to say where it is. But my recommendation would be to adjust your scene.json file to put the scene at zero, zero for a static deployment like this. So that if they don't put that stuff at the end, it'll work. Do you understand what, what I'm saying there? Yeah, I, th I think I think I follow you. I, I just um, I had a little bit of trouble getting it up in the in the browser. Maybe maybe that was the reason was the uh, not adding the the position to it. Were you getting a blank world? I it just what I, I just couldn't get it get it going. I, um, yeah, I if you're getting you know, nothing, then then very possibly you don't have um, this this relationship between where you put the content and your subdomain set up right. But if you get like a square grid on the ground and sky, but nothing there, you probably have a positions issue in, that uh, your URL either needs to say where it is, or you need to change your scene.json file to zero. So, so when, when you do the DCL export, um, that, that you wouldn't include the position in that? In no. that uh, okay. no, that's all defined in the scene.json file. Okay, that's right. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, let me just, I just so that, um, whoops, <laughs> oh, that's going to be a pain. Let me, let me. It's uh, lowercase. Okay, so uh, let me just fix the way this looks so that it's um, more correct. Um, just a reminder that you can supply a comma here when you provide a URL, but it will, when you hit it, it'll come back with a percentage 2C in here instead of the comma between the two numbers. Um, and that works also. You can provide either one to your visitor. Um, I just wanted to go over uh, how you can trigger th something to happen interactively in the scene. Um, one of the most obvious ways is that if somebody clicks on something and you have an unclick handler on it and you have uh, 
you know, you put some code in the on click handler, that code will get called when they uh, click on something. So when they click on it, you could have a sound or you could have something move or you could res a new object. Um, you could have an animation start from a GLTF uh, file by launching the animation. Obvious ways. I saw in a recent um, blog post about one of their recent upgrades to the SDK that they're supporting some other event types. Now, I've not played with them. Um, I'm assuming that uh, OnClick still works. Um, uh, but anyway, read up, try out some of their events. Another way you can get something to happen is to um, either have, have it happen over time or happen at certain times using uh, a system. You remember a system is a object that you define and submit to the engine that has an update method that gets called 30 times a second with a time parameter that is the amount of time since the last time it was called. Well, you can keep adding that into a, um, an accumulator, into a variable, um, and that is how much time has passed since the beginning of time of the scene, since the user loaded the scene. Um, or you can use uh, that kind of a mechanism to set up a, 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 a countdown timer. For example, you could say when you know something happens, the beginning of the scene or a click or something, that you set a, a time variable to a certain number of seconds, and it, in every update call, you subtract dt from it and test to see if it got if it got to zero or less than equal to zero, or less than equal to um, the time itself, uh, the dt, um, to, to tell that you've counted down to zero basically, and at that time you could trigger an event, um, including resetting the timer so that it happens again later, um, and then uh, there are some scenes in there, sample scenes that use G. If you get too close to the narc, he reacts. Um, and he's doing, the, is doing that by using a system that is on every update, it checks the distance between uh, your camera, the script is of course running at, against you, um, between your camera and the narc, uh, using a little bit of, of math. And if that uh, distance is um, less than some threshold, it, it causes um, a anima different animation to be called. Um, some changes in the walking and all that. Um, so those are some of the ways you can make something happen. Um, a, uh, another possibility is to use um, an a, uh, external server. Um, you can make calls to external web services from script um, and you could be pulling web server and when the weather changes, it starts snowing in your scene. Um, there are some examples of that also in the uh, decentralized samples. Um, anybody else have some, un any other ideas about how to trigger things, uh, make things start happening? I have a question on something kind of specific. It's the uh, call callback. Where uh, let me see here. I, I the documents, and basically, um, where it says where it says uh, I should just post this in the chat. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not sure what. Exactly. Like, so in the chat, I have uh, where it says log finished moving box. Well, I, I don't understand what, what that. Did you put it in the chat already? In the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, which one? Oh, up in the chat chat? Uh, yeah, it's in the chat for the uh, for Zoom. Oh, in that Zoom chat. Sorry. Um, yes, let me paste it over into the little scratch document I'm working with there. Um, here's what, here's what you put in the, in the chat. Uh, 
so, so I mean that that's what they have for the example, but I, I'm just I, I'm not sure what that means in in the quotes or like what you, if if you're supposed to put what what you're actually supposed to put in that those quotes. Um, I don't know if that's enough co code. Yes, yeah, it's, code. it's not. Do you have um? Do you have a link to the document where this is? Uh, where are you getting this from? Um, I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it and I'll I'll link it in. Yeah. In a second. Um, okay. Somebody asked me if I had experience with the utils trigger component. Um, no, I don't. I have not had a chance to go learn about their utils yet. It looks like there's some really good stuff in there. I think there probably are some timer things, perhaps, and trigger things. Um, so uh, w worth learning, but I have not learned yet. Um, uh, what I'm seeing in this little teeny piece of code here um, looks to me like it's a lambda function. It's um, part of part of some other piece of code where um, a uh, a function is a parameter to uh, some other call. But the what's happening inside the lambda function is simply um, some uh, text being written to the browser console. The log function um, uh, in in scripts says whatever I have it as a string inside of, uh, of here, write that out to the, um, to the browser console, the one that you get when you type F12 and, and then click on the console tab. Uh, you're able to write things out there. It's sometimes useful for uh, debugging or when you're prototyping something. Uh, you know, you want something to happen and you haven't written all the what it is that happens yet, but you want to see if you've triggered having it happen. You can do something like this. Um, so uh, that's how you can uh, help yourself figure out what's happening in the scene. Sometimes I've had scenes where just something isn't working. And so I put a number of log statements kind of sprinkled down through the code, like numbered, like log, uh, you know, of quote one, quote two, quote three, et cetera, um, down through the, and, you know, it'll go down a certain distance and then it stops. And I maybe it, there's an error report in the log, but I didn't know where it was coming from. But by, by putting log statements in there, I can figure out kind of where it broke. Um, sometimes you'll get breakage that doesn't show up as a syntax error in, in uh, code. It's a runtime error. And so you, sometimes you have to do something like this to figure that out. I see a link from... I'm just going up a little bit. Sustain let me call back. These are the from the utils. Okay. Um, yes, I see what I see. Um, so uh, there's some new components that uh, this looks like a lerp function uh, kind of behavior. Um, I'm, I'm guessing a little bit here, but the, in utils, the new utils uh, package, there's a move um, transform component with a constructor uh, that looks like these three parameters here look rather like a lerp sort of arrangement where you say, I want something to start here and end there and run for, take this long to do it. Um, and then one more parameter is provided um, in this, which says, call me back when it's done. That way I can maybe do the next thing or make something else stop or start. Um, and so this lambda, this lambda function here, which is an unnamed function um, that has this behavior between the, the, these curly braces here. Um, inside it right now, all it's doing is saying, um, print out to the console that I finished moving the box. But you could instead, instead of writing a log statement here, you could put in some code that does something like start a timer or um, initiate another another action. Okay, great. That that answered my question because I wasn't sure. Like, uh, I guess the syntax in the quotes "finish moving box." I wasn't sure if that was that was. Uh, <laughs> Some, something that, that would do something or if that, no, you know, no, it's just, okay. just, a, just a message to the console. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, if not, I will resume with some of the things I wanted to, 
to review. So we talked a little bit here about some ways you can make things happen. Um, a couple of things that I learned uh, since our last lesson about animations. Uh, um, I was working with, with one of our students on uh, animating one of the builder objects, um, getting it to um, have you know, an internal movement. Um, and um, so we brought it into Blender and uh, built an animation for it using the standard animation mechanism. We rigged, we rigged it and then we animated And it worked great in Blender. Worked great and uh, the central line. Instead of animating, it kind of shrunk to zero and then grew back and then ran half the animation incorrectly. Uh, it was very bizarre. Um, so I uh, contacted to Decentraland and they were aware of the problem, but not, they, I think they didn't have test cases. They just kind of had heard of it. So I uh, made a very simple uh, scene of a, uh, a column that um, has some animations in it and sent that off to them. And then I remembered that the objects I had successful um, animations from were ones I had purchased from CG Trader or that I gotten from the Mixamo tool. Um, and they were all FBXs. So I thought, hmm. So I exported my Blender file to FBX and I re-imported into Blender and voila, it worked. And so, you know, kind of a clumsy workaround, but then um, when I reported that to Decentraland, their, their staff figured out, oh, the issue is that there's a setting when you export from Blender that you need to set and running a, a file through FBX basically uh, effectively gets that set. But let me show you where it is. It's really important. Um, let me No, nope, I don't want that. I want um, huh. where was the, oh, second. open recent Oh, it must be that it's moved. Sorry. Um uh let me find where it is. Hold on. I, I apologize for not being better prepared on this one. Um, here it is. What's going on here? I've seen this before, and I don't remember what what's the cause of it. Sometimes when you open up a Blender file, it um, let me just see if one of the other ones opens up better. There it is. Okay, um, I did something wrong with that file. Um, so I just made a column um, object. Uh, looks like like that. And I put a, um, some bones in it and a animation that uh, bend, bends it over uh, like that. And if I, uh, it's in loop, if I go to the, um, oh, excuse me, if I select the whole thing, you get to see the animations for the various bones. And you know, I start and end with it being in its rest position so that it returns and loops properly. And I, I first created this fully bent position and then I uh, went to some of the intermediate positions and created key points there and moved them a little closer so that it would kind of accelerate as it goes down. Um, just messing around with that. But when I export this to a GLB, um, although it works in 
Babylon JS, it doesn't work in Decentraland. So the important thing to do is when you do the export to a GOB or a GLTF, let me try that again. Um, on this animation tab, you want to click always sample animations. Typically you want to leave the sample rate at one, but this is uh, not on by default. And when you do that, you get um, back in here, it will, it will put keyframes at every frame in here. Um, so that you're, it's, um, it works, <laughs> but you'll, if you, if you re-import that GLB, you'll see that the, um, that this, this place is, is completely full of, of keyframes. So it's sampling at every frame uh, of motion. It doesn't do it in here because nothing's changing, but between, uh, all the places where there's change going on, it'll put keyframes in and that makes it work in Decentraland. Um, if you import an FBX that has, uh, animations in it, it will look like that. Um, so, uh, that's the solution there. Uh, Decentraland said they're going to continue to work on trying to make it so you don't need to do that because it does make the file larger, um, uh, probably makes the animation load more slowly. Um, so they're aware of that. They can improve that. But in the meantime, you have a workaround, you can get your animations to work. Um, if you buy an FBX that's animated and import it into Blender and look at the animations, you'll probably find that they're, they're all, uh, filled in that way. Let's see if I have any questions in chat here. Nope. Okay. So going back to some notes for today, um, People have had some trouble with some, uh, some materials at times. Uh, there's a scene uh, in the sandbox where there's a jet pack. Um, we did figure out what was going with, on with that, but it's a little bit of work to change it. But there is a, a mechanism that can be used in Blender, but it doesn't work in Decentraland to put the colors of um, the, the mesh right in the mesh object vertices. Um, and that method of, of creating material does not work in Decentraland. So somebody found an article and posted it on how to uh, um, change that form into a real material. Um, so that's, that was one problem. But then we also had um, somebody asked for some help with a um, particular seen that they were having methods. Um, this one here. Let's, let's take a look at this and see what's going on. Um, are you on the call? If so, maybe I am. you can. Yep. Yeah. What, what is the, tell me what the problem is with the, or tell us what the problem is with this. Scene. <clears throat> yeah. Just a little bit of context. These were models that I picked up off of SketchUp and I have the new version of SketchUp, which has a, an extension that allows it to be exported to a GLB or exported as a GLB. And then and I imported the GLB into Blender. Mm -hmm. And it looks great in Blender. Um, and I did this for many different models and ended up combining them into what looks like a city street. And some of the materials look fine. And then some of them, uh, came out a little bit empty in spots. And uh, I, I just wasn't able to understand if it was a, a DCL issue um, or if it, you know, if there's a, an actual issue with the model itself that maybe can be fixed in Blender. But uh, Blend, Blender shows the model fine. So it's it's been hard for me to uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot. I did, yeah. yeah. Okay. Please. Uh, I was just gonna say the one, just to troubleshoot, I did try exporting as a GLTF so that I could see all of the images, you know, um, I could open up the images in Photoshop and actually look at them and make sure that, you know, there's no, well, no issues with the images themselves. Um, and so that, that didn't help. And, and so I'm, I'm kind of, um, just not sure what to do next. Let's take a look. I'm, uh, just from what you're saying, I'm guessing that some of the materials aren't set up with the right shaders for Decentraland, but let's take a look and see. Um, I'm going to clone the scene into
Is this going to be your, your uh, game jam submission? It is one of them. Nice. Yes. Nice. And I'm really nervous about it now because after the most recent update to the SDK, the frame rates are just terrible. And I don't know what happened. I thought maybe it was an issue with my machine and I restarted to clear the memory. And, uh, and even on a blank scene, um, it's the, the frame rates I'm seeing are lower than before I updated the, the SDK locally. What, what, so. What's the uh, frame rates you're seeing now? Is it less than 60? I actually only normally see 30 for some reason on average. And, and, then, and then now I'm seeing like 20. And then this scene in particular is at like 10. So it, it almost doesn't even run because it's so slow. Um, so that's kind of my next issue, but I figure, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah. The actual uh, entrance to the scene is just a little to the right there, where you see that first lighted tree. And uh, the issue is that some of these buildings should have texture on them. They don't, right? Yeah, exactly. You can see the, the empty spots on them, where yes. in Blender, those are not empty there. Um, how about this building here? Is it uh, supposed to have uh, texture on it? No. The other ones that are completely empty are supposed to be completely empty. So for probably we shall examine. Does this castle have a problem? Like yeah, the the just top? where the white, the white spots are, yep, on yeah. the spires. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop the music here and um, go into your scene. Which one? It's the Magnificent Mile 10 GLB. Okay. Is this as it straight came from the Sketchfab export? Um, or have you done additional yeah, work? Yeah, okay. for the most part. Um, I might have made some slight adjustments to reduce the file sizes by taking out some of the, the detail, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, there, there also were some some extra images included in these for some reason in the materials that uh, bloated the file size that I removed as well. So, so they're just some small things like that. I did have a similar problem with that. And um, when I did the export to GLB file, um, I had to check mark the add the modifiers. I don't know if you had that check mark. I did that as well. I because I, I saw the note from Carl about that about using that as uh, one of the one of the default settings, and I did confirm that even when I check apply modifiers, it it's still an issue. Gotcha. Oh, it's the whole scene. It's just the buildings, yeah. All right, so. Uh, it's this one here. All right, so uh, do you happen to have a sense of which, from your knowledge of this, which of these materials, um, tower maybe? I believe it's WT Spire 1.001. All right, uh, let's, let's put it in a mode where it should be showing, uh, yes, indeed, there should be something there. And um, it should look kind of like, uh, oops, I widened this enough that you couldn't see that. All right, um, it should have this kind of ricky looking pattern on stone. All right, so I'm going to go to um, shading for, with this particular um, 
I'm sorry, um, Spire one. And go to material here. And I'm looking here and I see that it is Spire one. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to move things around here, but it's making it easier to see all at once. It won't change anything. Um, not quite sure why they think you need that much space. But yeah, anyway. it, it, it does get annoying having to move those around each time. Yeah. Um, I actually found out that I don't even think the first three are even necessary. Um, it kind of seemed Which like... The, uh, these three? Or the, or the first couple, maybe the first two. Uh, yeah, and the node. Um, it, it certainly is essential to have this because this is the uh, image that should be producing that, that result. Mm -hmm. And it's hooked up right. So let's look at this particular um, image. It's image 26, texture paint. Um, image 26. Um, never mind that I'm not quite sure what's going on with uh, the UV mapping here. The image itself looks um, blurry and um, nothing like what I would expect for what's on there. Um, you say, uh, let's export this with all the images like you said and see if maybe it's just the wrong one hooked up there. Um, file, export. GLTF. Uh, let's put it in this uh, C colon temp directory. Why not? Um, and I'm going to do it as a, let's make a folder here. C colon documents temp. Okay. Um, I will check this. And uh, I'm pick, making sure that I'm picking the, the version of this that puts the textures external. Um, and then call it uh, um, Chicago. I could have picked just the selected object, um, of course. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's actually the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't say that much. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Looks like the one you want is 23 or 24. Um, this one is indeed, uh, oops. It's not, it's not blank. Oh, you know what? That's actually at the very top. So I was maybe wrong about which image is being shown on the, um, where the white yeah. spaces are showing. Understood. Um, it might actually be a different image. Yeah, we uh, do. We did, I closed it, right? Um, do, do you know? Happen to know? I think it's a blank at the top too. That was on purpose. Um, it was actually showing as a square, like you could see the background behind it. So I, I just basically deleted it, <laughs> so that it wouldn't show. You deleted the tower, the spire at the, the top, the very top of it. Yeah. You delete the mesh or the image or what? The mesh. Um, 
it seems like it's still here. Uh, and I have different versions of this, so maybe it was in a different version that I was working off of. Okay. Um, but uh, the tower... Wondering if we can, um, what's the easiest way maybe to kind of figure out which ones are which here. Um, if I go to layout and, oh, you're talking what about I was the, square, doing... the square up here? Yeah. And oh, I know, what's going, I know what's going on with that. Um, you probably didn't uh, have the transparency set up right, which, um, it's definitely possible to have that not set up right on an imported object. So okay. uh, we Good might, we might work on that one. In fact, yeah. um, but let's, let's see if we can figure this part, part out here first. Uh, you can actually delete the material and then press control Z to move it back. So that way you can see what happens. Yes. Like Thank you, you can kind of help figure out, yeah, which ones go where. Tower low set windows. That ought to be part of it. Tower low set windows, tower high set windows. Those two, right? Would be good ones to look at because they're blank on your thing. Mm -hmm. So go to um, shading here with uh, one of these selected. Uh, and image 23 it looks like it's the right one. Um, just for grins, it actually is showing, huh? In Blender. I'm just thinking a little bit. Um, I'm going to restart the scene and just check to see. They turned they turned off, unfortunately they turned off the error messages when things couldn't be found. Oh uh, no, I'm sorry, I wanted to go here. It could be it really could be this UV mapping is really screwy. Um I'm going to try the experiment of, of doing kind of what you said and removing it. Oops, uh, removing it. And um, see if it makes any difference at all in the appearance of stuff. Yeah, it's, oh. Once it settles down, it seems like it's okay huh, without that. It must be that the mapping on that piece of the mesh is um, doesn't have to be adjusted. Any. I, I'm not really sure, but I think that this is primarily so that you can do things like tiling um, and shifting shifting it around uh, differently than the, the default UV map. Um, just for grins, let's uh, do a real quick test here and export GL, GLTF here. I'm going to make it a GLB. Um, and I will temporarily put it in this directory, but call it Chicago 2. Um, and GLB. I think that's right. Okay. I hope I'm not missing anything I need to be doing here. And let's just see if by chance the panel show up on that. And the, the problem is that the UV mapping that was being attached was uh, messed up. You, put, I think you said you already tried this and it didn't work. I've tried a lot of things. Um, I did. There, it seemed like there, are, there are two materials in that same spot. 
and it kind of seemed like one was going on top of the other and I removed the one underneath just to reduce the file size. And, but I, I've, I've always seen that the same issue with the, the West spot, even without doing anything. Okay. So, um, going back to, oh, so I've dropped a GLB here. Let me go back to your scene, which is, uh, on D. It's all the way at the top. It's this one here? Yep. I think this looks right. This looks like it's a case where um, the parameters in scene.json are being heated. I didn't put um, I didn't put them in. Just picking them up from the scene JSON. Mm -hmm. I haven't experimented with uh, static deployments through DCL export to see if they're if it's working there. Um, hmm. I don't see anything going on. Let me just reload this. I'm not sure what's going on there. There we go. Um, I, obviously that didn't fix it. The tower sound here probably supposed to have brick on them too, right? Yes, correct. And I'm, I'm not sure if this is true, but it, it kind of seems like the issue is on any surface that is, that has curvature or, you know, is rounded. If you look at all the buildings where there's white spaces, it kind of seems like there's, a trend with where they're missing is they're all kind of rounded out spots on the mesh. Interesting. Um, that one, the one building where Santa's flying over right now, uh, has where the where it's it has the the missing spot on the sides. Um, I it seems like it's kind of flat, but maybe around the edges it's a little rounded. Um, this one and. Here? This one here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the size of it, it's... This really looks like a UV mapping problem here. That's, that looks like, it's not gray, it's a texture and it's just really stretched wrong, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, the white on the sides of it is where oh. it's still missing. Yeah, I see. And I'm wondering if that's because it has some curvature like where a lot of the other white spots are. Because there's... It was a, just one three, thought. Three dimensions to the mesh there. Yes, I see what you mean. Um, 
believe it or not, I'm tempted to take a little detour and fix that thing up on top. See the square up there you were talking about? Yeah, sure. Um, because maybe I can at least get a little satisfaction out of fixing that one. Um, do you happen to know? And that one should be the spire. That one there, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems like often the problem with that is that the um, settings on the material don't have, um, excuse me, it's, uh, is it here? Let's make sure we're on the right material here. Spire. And I think it's material settings. Um, yes, settings. Blend mode. Alpha blend. It's not, not anything that's over here in the map. It's just the thing over here under settings on that material. If you don't do that, it won't be it won't be the transparency of the uh, of the alpha. And the other thing is that you you have to do, um, add in um, the trans transparency shader. So add um, shader transparent BSDF, and then you use a mix shader to combine the BSDF output here and BSDF output here to go into there. So um, add mix shader. I think it's that way. And then you have to determine how much uh, of the, um, this is a factor input that says, do I want it to be more of this or more of this? It's a mixer. And that is actually in this case should be controlled by the alpha of this, of this image. If you were just making glass, um, you could just set a factor manually. But when you want to have something be uh, controlled by an, the alphas in an image. That's already looking better. Um, I have sometimes not been sure which of these guys. Yeah, that's the wrong way. Okay. Yep. I think if we now export this, uh, we will have that thing uh, correct up there. I'm really so curious about these other is there any possibility that applying the same setting to some of the other materials might fix the other spots? Oh, that alpha blend? Yeah. Mm. Now it has to do with transparency. We're not, we're not seeing um, what the symptom of not having this right is that you don't see the, the areas that should be invisible as invisible. They're, they're showing up black or gray or something. Um, I, I don't think there's anything in this other material that's supposed to be. Uh, well, I guess the thing to do is open up one of these files in GIMP and see if it has an alpha map and it's important in some way. But the, the more likely out result would be like where a window should be uh, transparent, you should be able to see into it, you would see gray. Um, and that's not the issue that we're having. Uh, so I, I don't think that's it. Um, I'm laughing because there's a, a mysterious thing that I see sometimes when you zoomed way in, you can't move anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, that's a blender thing of some sort. Uh, yeah, I've had to actually, I, I've had to save and close the project and reopen it just to get past that issue sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Beautiful. Well, the spire's looking good. 
Yeah, it was it was looking wrong even in Blender, wasn't it? Yes, and actually, um, the rest of that tower is not white anymore. It looks like that fixed the rest of it too. Uh, the rest of the top here. Yeah, remember the not not up there, but just down below. Just all the brick stuff was missing. Oh remember yeah, no, it was all white. No, it wasn't so now, it, now that's it, all fixed. No, it was correct in uh, Blender, wasn't it? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah in okay. Blender, right? My bad. Yeah. Um, let's just go back to that again. Um, it was like tower low set. This thing here, right? Yes, Control Z. And we disconnected the um, vector here, and it didn't make it better. Didn't make it worse. Um, I'm a little tempted to put it back just because it was uh, so it's back the way it was. Um, and the image that's being asked for here is 23, which is appropriate to that color. Base color. All this other stuff should be pretty irrelevant to whether or not the map shows up. It's not invisible, it's not transparent, it's just not being textured. Next color. You know, just for grins, I'm gonna disconnect the um, the source here. I'm gonna get it down so it's easier to work with here. Um, and instead of having that be the base color, I'm gonna have the base color be like orange. Like that. And let's just see if we get an orange tower. If it's still gray, then the problem is farther to the right in that diagram or in the in the workflow. Mm -hmm. If it's orange, then it's something to do with the way the image is hooked up. One of my favorite debugging techniques is to split the thing in the middle and see what side of the of the middle of the problem is on. With the, just as this is exporting here, with the uh, workaround for animations and exporting, uh, what was it, exporting as an FBX and then re-importing it back in? Uh, that, was, that, that was a workaround that I discovered on the way to figure out the right, the right way to solve it. The right way to solve it is when you do the export, click on the animation tab and check the... Um, Sample, uh, always sample animations or always sample keyframes. Right. Yeah. Well, it kind of gives me an idea of whether whether exporting this as other file types and then re-importing it back in and then exporting it as a GLB again mm -hmm. might be worth trying. Yeah, we could try that. Yes. Interesting. So uh, I have this now in the, do I have both of those? I don't. Okay, and let's open up another one here where we were putting those things, which is documents temp. And just for grins, I'm gonna just double click on this and see if we get orange here. Yep. Okay, so we know that we basically got that Right now, let's see if when if we, if we move this over into the scene, which is this one. Yep, 
Now, I don't trust that this uh, proved anything because my experience is that changing a GLB doesn't necessarily get it reloaded in a, a hot reload. Seems like right. that doesn't clear that cache. So uh, um, back before I figured out that that was a problem, I sure spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was wrong with my script when things didn't change properly. Mm -hmm. Typically, something didn't show up that was new. Uh, try and try to figure out what's wrong. It, no, it just needed to be refreshed. Yeah, I think generally I try to, if I'm changing a GLB, I generally do a, a hard refresh. If yep. it's just a code change, a hot refresh is fine. All right. So it really has something to do with the image in the, um, oh, and by the way, our spire is correct on top now. Very cool. So uh, your, by the way, your uh, moving object is going out of bounds. You, you've seen that, right? It was just because I rearranged, I, when I deployed it to DCL on the actual LAN, um, there's another uh, piece of land next to it that the, that you hear music from. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to move the, the scene away from that and moving stuff around. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm, I'm totally aware of what the issue is there and how to fix okay. it. All right. Um, I'm going to, how can I uh, kill the um, flying object? Just have it not show up. Yeah, uh, down just a little bit further. And um, we're, we're, it's called Santa and Reindeer. So wherever that's adding the entity, maybe, maybe a little bit further down where it's actually ad adding it to the engine. Right there? Yes. I'm just going to be so bold as to do that. I don't think that's the cause here problem, but wouldn't it be interesting if it was? <laughs> and then it makes another issue, but at yes. least we'd be getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't I don't think that's it. That's really interesting. The image it it must be that the UV map is wonky on that. Uh You know, if we, if we replace that image with something that was stone everywhere instead of just a little tower in the middle, I'm guessing it'll show up and that the problem is that the mapping is, is wrong. Um, okay, so that didn't change the, uh, this other, the, the other part here. Um, your thought that it has to do with curvature could be uh, kind of correlated to the idea that the UV maps was set up wrong. Um, or wrong for decentralized in some way. Um, trying to move non-existent thing over there. Okay. Um, all right. So what I was going to do was um, try replacing this image 23 or image 24 with something that's just all stone. Um, let's call this uh, image 23 hide and uh, oops I think I put that in the wrong place ah, don't do that um, see how on on the icon there it looks like the that one has oh, like a white white outline I know it I know what your problem is this thing's not the right shape I'll bet you so would it be dollars or donuts? Invalid um, image file. That's your problem. Uh, to solve this, you would not only have to make this file. Um, it might only be that we just have to resize it. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's let's do that. Um, Okay, so open with GIMP. Yeah, you definitely are going to get uh, very bad behavior if one of the dimensions is larger than 1024. And it really should be 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024 in most cases. Yep, 
that was one of my things I had on my list later on was to go back and change the file sizes to reduce the you know, to reduce the resolution of the image files to reduce the size of the final GLB. Yeah. Um, in lesson nine, there was a tree that had partly rec- uh, partly gray foliage. There was like a square area that was good, and then there was the rest of the rectangular of the branch was gray. And it was because one of the dimensions on this uh, thing, on its images was greater than 1024 and it wasn't square. Mm. Um, I'm going to make it, oh, and by the way, you have to turn this off in order to be able to change the aspect ratio. You have to turn off the little uh, lock here. Um, Let's just see if that fixes it. I would kind of expect I would have seen something in the middle, but actually just the the thing being totally the wrong size uh, probably just is breaking it completely. So now I'm going to go file, export as image 23. It's right over the top of it. Export. And now if we come back here to these, image 23 looks like that now. And if I reload the scene, it's probably the one that's orange. <laughs> let, me, let me fix that. We're not gonna see anything here. Um, I can fix it also by fixing the other image. Let me do that too, because I, I, I know there's at least one other one that's in here that's wrong. It's this one here, I think be this one. I think it's 24. I got ahead of myself there, line two. Let's try that again. There's several of them here. This is very possibly one of those other columns, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just do that too. Um, This isn't going to make any difference unless I use the GLTF. I'm not doing this. I, I'm not. I, you know what? I could bring them back into the Blender file. Yeah, I was going to say maybe you can import the GLTF and then export the GLB. Yeah, or I just uh, ret- retach those. But let's for, for right now, let's get the GLTF over there. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to make a mess here, but, um, oh, we need this too. Um, don't need to over, I don't, it doesn't matter what I do about that one. Okay. So back in your scene here. And now in here, um, I said in here, I need to make this, um, you said it's near the top? Yes. Uh, let's just get right here. Um, did I export a GLT, a Chicago 2? Is that what I did? No, Chicago.gltf. Control. 
control F5, start it over again. And I'm going to show you how to bring those images back into Blender. So you don't have awesome. To do I was wondering about that. Yeah. Hey. Awesome. Uh, now, in this uh, GLTF, I had not yet fixed the problem up here. So what right. I'm going to do is I have a Blender file open that I've, I've made some of the repairs to. Um, but let me hook up color here again. And we have the transparency working here, but let's, let's, um, if I uh, look at this image in texture paint, it looks like this, right? Uh, image 23, uh, image 24, so I, clearly I don't have the, the uh, right ones in Blender. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go back here to shading and go here and say, um, is it open here? Unpack, new image. Um, I'm going to actually temporarily delete this shader. I don't know how to replace the image in an image shader, so I just got a new one. Uh, texture, image shade, image texture, put that here. And um, where I did that editing was way the heck over in uh, C colon, right? So I'm gonna open, this doesn't yet have any image associates, so I'm gonna open, and I go over C colon, uh, users, Table, documents, temp, this, image, was it 23? Is that the one we were on? Uh-oh. Um, I think so. Oh, I guess I could just, um, cancel. I got a little ahead of myself here. I'm control Z a couple times. Image 23. Okay, open. Map my clipboard because I'm going to have to pick another one and it may not remember it. I don't know that the um, that this is essential, but let me hook it up anyway. Vector to <laughs> those guys. What were they thinking? All right. Uh, before we spend a lot more time on um, this, must be one of the other images. Now you have to tell Blender to um, make sure that the file, the image file, gets placed into the Blender file to keep it and. If you don't do that, then it may not be able to work with it very well. So under external data, um, pack all into Blender. Uh, is that a checkbox? I, it seems sometimes to do this stuff without having to be told that. Um, but uh, in any case, it does seem to know this is a different file name with a PNG on the end, and it is working in here, so I'm guessing it's going to work out there. Let's just try one of them and see before we spend a lot more time on, oops, 
Cancel not saving that yet. I'm exporting file um, export. We make it a GLB. We know how to get that one hooked up. So let's see, to summarize, I think we're going to work. Um, images really do need to be binary powers of two uh, squares of 1024. They say 512 max, um, but 1024s are still working. Um, and the transparency and emissive shaders have to be handled as external shaders, not part of the principal BS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, alpha blend mode uh, property in the material. It's not anywhere on the shader map. It's over on the right in the in the settings. how long this takes it'll be interesting though to see if the file size is is any smaller after you know changing the resolution on those images the glb itself yeah i guess i guess before we ended I up it decreasing over, before one i copy it over and uh, decreasing the other uh 12 14 that's not the current one. Oh, where did i put it oh this is still the um it's over here all right so the size of this is now well. It, it, let's see. This is the after, and this over here is the before. Slightly bigger uh, because those little skinny things got wide. Right. More yeah. than the so height got small. We we increased width even though we decreased height. So I guess it kind of evened out. Yeah, we increased width a lot more than we decreased height. Um, so that it's not surprising. It's a little bit bigger. If this file just gets way too big, you could consider using 512s. They're probably big enough. Mm -hmm. um, and that would cut the size of your images by a quarter in terms of bits. I might right, even so, go lower than that, it, you know, as long as it still looks good. I'll, yeah. I'll try, I'll try yeah. diff different um, Absolutely. levels. Yes. So this GLB now is the new one. Um, right. This is where we were writing out stuff. Okay. So copy this and go here and write it and reload the scene. The scene seems to be noticing that. Hmm. And just out of curiosity, if you hide the console there, uh, is, does, is, does it show your the frame rate in the bottom right corner? I'm just curious as to what it's showing on your screen, if, or if you can see it. 30, uh, it's grayed 30. out on, on mine here. It is? Yeah, there's a big gray area over that really? <laughs> for some reason. Huh. Well, um, it's, it's running around 30. So... Yeah. It, is that um, that's, pretty uh, normal with? No, that's low. Okay. I, I, I typically see it 60 or above on things, but I haven't looked at the, can you see it now? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. And look, uh, we, didn't, Beautiful. we didn't fix this thing here. Yeah, that's fine. I've got that down. I can go you and do that. understand how to do that. Okay. Yep. Um, it looks to me like uh, the UV map works even with the, the image the, a different size. Right, yeah, that's so awesome. It, I think it's painted appropriately on here. It looks like windows to the right size, sort of. So hopefully just the same issue with the other buildings too then. Mm -hmm. Excellent, yeah. well, thanks for carving out the time here on uh, today's session to go sure. through this. I hope that's that this was helpful stuff. for everyone else watching. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but it's worth worth knowing. And uh, people hadn't seen before how you hook an image back up here. Um, you know, it would be ideal if you could uh, um, just say, "Oh, 
I'll link the data block. Look at that. That's how you do it. And then you just, you didn't, I didn't have to uh, go um, kill the whole, the whole map node. I could just have, um, I think you saw what I did there. I, um, there was an X box over here and I clicked it. Let me undo that. So I was kind of thinking that it was like, you know, a, a file browser to replace it. Well, first you have to delete it. So you delete it and then you say, um, oh, since it's already in the thing, I had already loaded it before. I don't have to go hunting for it. But if, if I hadn't loaded it and I wanted to, well, let's, see, let's actually do that for the, um, for the high set windows, this one here. Close that, open. There, that would have done it. Okay. I'm looking back at the Zoom chat to see if anybody's asked any other questions. And uh, anybody on the call here have any other things that they want to ask about? Hey, Carl, I have a question about animation. Yes. Um, so when we're exporting something with multiple actions, um, I've been talking to my teammates about it and some files need to be exported separately to animate. Um, but say I have a file with a lot of components that all need animating at the same time. What options do I have for that? Someone mentioned I could blend animation clips, that that was possible in the SDK. But mm -hmm. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> yes. Um, in general, the, uh, if you want the animation to work at full amplitude, in other words, let's go back to my scene with the, the bendy column. I'm going to, just in case we decide we want to go back here somewhere. Um, one moment, let me just save this Blender file because it's interesting. going to uh, free up some memory here by stopping this scene. And I have a, I have a get there. This guy has only one uh, animation in it, right? Um, I have a version of this file that has three different ways of bending this thing, and that would be an example perhaps. But um, let's just let's just speak for a moment, make sure we have the same context. So um, are you speaking of one mesh like this that you want to animate more than one way or multiple meshes in the um, Blender file that you, that you want to e animate each? The second, so it's multiple objects within the Blender file that are animated separately and they kind of come together in one big file and exported. Hopefully, yes. from the different pieces. Yeah, that's. I, I think that you're not going to get a satisfactory. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The shark is an example of that. Have you ever looked at the shark um, 
in, in import it into Blender and take a, take a look. There are actually two animations in it, one mm. for the tail wagging and the other for the biting. And uh, the reason that it works, so it's two, I mean, let me back up a little bit. An animation affects certain bones, but not necessarily all the bones in the object. And it sounds like in your scenario, the different parts of the mesh each have their own rigging separately. Is that true? Separate rigs? Yes, that's right. Okay, so that's a, that's a good thing because if the rigs are totally um, non-overlapping, they don't share any bones, then you, you can um, export them. Uh, you definitely want to make sure when you do the export that you do this thing that I mentioned earlier. I don't know if you caught that. When you export to GLTF, you want to go to the animation tab here and turn on always sample animations. That will cause the animation that is exported to work properly with Decentraland. Otherwise, you get a very strange um, dysfunctional uh, animation. So that's really important. And um, then the, the clip names, was this model made in Blender? Um, it was actually made in Cinema 4D, which is part of the, of the issues that we're having. Okay. Um, you're, how do you get it to Blender? Um, so it was exported to FBX and then imported okay. in FBX format. Yeah, FBX seems to do a pretty good job of bringing in multiple animations and, uh, excuse me, I don't know about multiple animation, but it does a pretty good job of bringing in animations that already are fully sampled, like that checkbox, which is why when you buy an animated model, it tends to work. Bring it in as an FBX and export as GLB. It, it came in with that, all, those, all those keyframes already sampled. Um, so that part probably is okay. Um, if you have the animations working on different pieces of rigging, then you should be able to call um, any of them independently in your, in your uh, script and uh, turn them on and off. And the shark example uh, scene shows you how to do that with more than one uh, animation clip in the model. Um, so I would refer to that. They have one that's just on from the beginning, the wagging of the tail, and it's just on all the time. And then the, the biting animation, which is the front part of the shark, a different set of bones, um, is triggered from clicking on it. Um, so that should work. Uh, there's a little bit of a chance that you're not getting multiple animations imported into the Blender file. So here's where you would check that, is you go to animation, and um, normally it comes up by default like this dope sheet, and it shows one particular animation. Um, but if you put it on action editor, then over here, you get a list of, of the, all the animations that are, that are present. Um, you do have to select the, um, the part of the ringing, the bones that you want to see animations for. So, uh, so when we plug the model into the SDK or whatever you call it, the mm -hmm. programmers will have to call um, each animation to play at the same time? Yes. According to its file name? Yes, according to its um, name here. <laughs> okay, thank and you. And the other thing is that when you import an FBX file or an external file into Blender with, that has animations, it renames the animations. It adds um, to, I made this one in here and I called it Blend, but if I were to Im import one that had a name Blend, it would end up with a name like um, Armature Vertical Bar something else Vertical Bar Blend underscore something. It's just, it, it makes a mess. And you can come into Blender once you've imported it and either get the name and just make sure you use it, or you can change the name back to what you want and then export it as GLB. But you, um, you can do that just by double clicking here and renaming it and clean it up. But the, F, the FBX import at least, and maybe any import tends to change the name of the animation. And it's because of how they hold animations. Um, 
when you have multiple animations, you get another, you get some more structure over here in the, in the hierarchy that stores the other animations that aren't currently the one that's being edited and used. Um, in Blender, I believe in Blender, you can, when you play, you only play the one that's, that's currently selected in the Adobe sheet or the action editor. Um, and I'm not sure, let me go see um, if I can f figure out why I was having trouble opening up the, I wanna show you just one that has multiple animations in it that were made in Blender. Um, I think when I tried to open these a little while ago, they didn't open. Is that correct? Uh, I don't want to see any changes. I think I've, I figured out the other day why it, files weren't opening and then I've forgotten why it was. Let me try, instead of pasting the name in, let me go uh, just see if I can walk to it. Um, file, open, not recent, but just go, go get it. Um, I was running out of space on my disk. You know, it's doing this weird thing. It's like not agreeing to uh, open the Blender file. I'm sorry. Um, let's go back to the other one. This looks like it's two different ones. Is one of those working? No. Has anybody ever seen this with Blender? You go open a blend file and it, instead of opening it, it shows you the GLBs that are in the directory. It's just really weird. Um, not sure what's going on there. I'm sorry. No. Um, my my point was just that. Uh, let me oh, let me import the shark and you, maybe you'll see what I mean. Maybe I'll try that. Um, Blender. Elite file import GLB. Um, I think that that would be on D colon. Shark animation. Uh, ooh, did I delete it? Yeah. Let's go get it. All right, so the shark animation uh, is under scene examples. And go down to we see the shark. This one right here. Go to code. Um, get the HTTP. Yeah, it really is empty. Okay, so I'm getting the shark animation uh, scene. And now um, open up its shark. Um, and it has 
two animations, but only one of them is playing uh, because that's the one that's selected in the animation dope sheet. Um, and if I go to action editor here, um, Uh... There we go. I had to go to pose mode. Um, Usually you work in object mode or edit mode, but if you go into pose mode, then select the, the, the object, you also get the bones and therefore your um, animations, the animation shows up. This is what a, um, the result of having every keyframe uh, captured. This is what the effect you get when you export with, uh, um, all, you know, I forget the words, I keep forgetting them. Um, always sample animations. Now, since they're already all sampled coming in from however this was created, um, this is gonna work when I export, but if, I would typically wanna turn that on when I was exporting something with animations. There's two uh, different animations in here, one called bite and one called swim. Let's move this over just a little bit. And it looks to me like this was ex imported from a, um, an FBX at some point in his life because we see the case here where the original name of the animation was probably just Byte. And, um, excuse me, we just imported this from, from a GLB. I'm sorry, that's when it happened just now that when we imported it, the name got extended to be the name of the, sphere as a, as a suffix, the name of the mesh as a suffix, excuse me, the name of the armature got suffixed onto the name of the animation. Um, and so if I were to export this right now, it wouldn't work in the scene anymore because the scene expects the animation to be called just byte. So I absolutely could just go in here and change that back to byte and it works. Um, and There's the name. There's the name that needs to be edited. You can either edit in the action uh, editor or you can edit it up here like there. I have just unbroken it uh, with regard to the animation naming. I don't know why importing GLBs into Blender, why they made the decision to suffix that. They obviously had the right code to make that happen and there was a good reason for it, I'm sure maybe because there could have been duplicate names between different objects. Um, and so they avoided that by disambiguating it. But um, it, it, would have break, it would break the, you didn't actually have that conflict and it would break the scene. So um, if you had a reason to come in here and edit this at all. But under the action editor, you can pull down and look at the other one when there's multiples. And the affected bones here are um, spine one, spine three, tail, root. Whereas under this one, it's just jaw. So because they don't um, animate the uh, same bones, they can both be called at the same time with full weight. Um, when you call an animation, when you set up an animation, the default weight is one. If you call two different animations on the same rig, you have to reduce their weights to something that if, if they were all being run at the same time would add up to one or less, or they don't work at all. So let me show you where that is in the code. Let me, I might have that here recently too. Let 
right here. So I've set up um, three clip three animations in it, and they're called bend, swing, and twist. Um, and I'm setting their weights. They, they affect the same mesh. So I'm setting their weights to 0.33. Well, one of them made 0.34. I can make them all 0.33. Um, I set their speeds to what, how fast I want them to go. I add their clips to the same animator. Um, and then I, um, on clicking three different buttons, I um, turn the, the animations on and off. Um, but by having them on the same mesh, on the same rig, Having the animations affect the same bones, I have to reduce the weights. Now, it turns out if you only call one of them, you still get full weight. Um, but if you call more than one of them, then it starts to attenuate them in proportion to the weights that, of the ones that are running. Uh, and it works. Um, this was kind of figured out heuristically by doing some testing and, and consulting with a Decentraland. Um, but yes, you can have multiple animations on the same mesh if they affect different bones, you just can just use them. If they affect the same bones, you need to make sure that their weights of um, any that might be running at the same time don't add up to more than one. I hope that kind of covered it all. This twisty column scene is, by the way, is available in my DCL Tech uh, GitLab. If you want to pull it and explore it, you can. Let me show you where that is. I'm going to just remind people where this is here. Okay, and in there, um, twisty column. Uh, this is the one that has a uh, source code for how, to, uh, for how to work with multiple animations that even are on the same bones. Feel free to uh, share all that information with your team. Are there any other questions? I want to just um, mention that uh, once again, that the shaders that actually create appearance on the surface that are supported are the um, primarily the principal BSDF, but also the transparent BSDF, which you must use if you want transparency, and the emissive uh, shader. Um, let's see, let's remind ourselves which ones are, are usable. Let's try a new scene. I don't know what's going on there. All right, so uh, this I think has the material, right? So if I go here and go to shading, yeah, okay. So, um, yes. Um, I think UV map is usable from there. You must use the material output over here at the right and have stuff flow into it. Um, the shaders that work are probably exactly the ones that say BSDF, but maybe not all of them. Um, uh, the, the kind of the core of what Decentraland is looking for is the principal BSDF shader. It's the big one that would be used in all our, all our node maps. Uh, if you want to have emission, you have to use the emission shader. It's up there at the third one up there. Uh, this one. Um, and if you want something to be transparent, you need this one. 
I have not tried the other BSTF shaders. You also can use the add shader, which you need to use if you're using emission. You need to add it to the other color stuff. And the mix shader is the one you use to combine the transparent BSTF with the output of the principal BSTF. So those are the shaders. Uh, textures, the only one I've ever used is image texture. I've tried, and that's not quite true, I tried the brick texture and it didn't work in De Decentraland. It, made, it worked fine in um, Blender, but it didn't, it didn't export something that would work. Um, so those are the, um, the ones that I've used. I've seen some scripts that use math or um, various um, converters or, or inputs, um, just values. Um, typically, you can get what you want just by working with those other shaders, but sometimes uh, complex math uh, maps use a few of these other things. Anyway, so I hope that um, hope that's helpful. Um, I think we saw the other day that uh, in, a, in a Blender file, I had a tree with a trunk as one piece of mesh and the foliage as some other pieces of mesh. And uh, the trunk had different material than the foliage. In fact, the foliage had a couple different versions of foliage. So there can be several materials that um, exist in a Blender file for what might look like one model. And if you're doing some editing or repair, you need to make sure you're on, you pick the right one in the Blender file by, uh, if you're working with something that has multiple textures, this, this doesn't, but you may see a number here. You see several, several materials. You have to make sure you're on the right one when you're doing some editing. We saw some problems with that before. Um, I've been adding to this Blender hints and tips notebook as I you might want to look at that. I think that's it for my notes for today. Does anybody have any other questions? You have time. I have uh, s uh, several problems with my scene. If you can help me, that would be great. Yes. Uh, so uh, first of all, I have some problems with the uploading. It's a bit strange because when I um, when I refresh the uh, when I refresh my scene in the browser, I'm seeing uh, no textures and no shades, uh, no colors of the shades. But when I update my scene inside the code inside Visual Studio by clicking Control S, uh, in several seconds everything becomes everything normalizes. What does it mean? Um, so um, I think you're saying that when you um, make a change here, the scene that's running, I don't currently have one running. Oh, let's. let's the, same make it. the same problem is when I, for example, I close the scene and then I make a DCL start once again. I see just the shapes with no colors, nothing else. But when I open the code once again, I'm clicking Control S, everything analyzes. Oh, that's that is interesting. Um, can do you have the uh, scene in GitLab by chance? Yes, yes, I do. Um, can you give me? Can you put the? Uh, Link to, are you willing to put the link to it in the course here, or would you rather not? Yeah, one, one second. Okay. I'll give it a try. You can see it in the chart in here in Zoom, no? Um, yes. And there is, uh, while you are trying to uh, start all this, um, I'm just want, I want to see that I have 
the second problem, and this problem is I'm trying to create an elevator, and I have uh, several um, floors, and I'm trying to play with add uh, add or replace components or something about that, and I having some problems because the initial uh, transform component, the position component, uh, doesn't update. It has I don't know doesn't something is wrong <laughs> yeah Just, okay it's in the same scene yes 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 it's here okay so i'm going to clone this scene and um yes This is still scene. Oh, this is scene 13. Good. Okay. So get clone 13. Uh, by the way, is it uh, how is it 40 megabytes? Can I see from you? 40, 43, no? Is it megabytes or something? What is it? M, I, B, what is it? Um, I have no idea what little M, little I, little B is. Huh. Because I'm not sure if uh, there is, as far as I know, there is a limitation on the size of the scene. And it's uh, for one parcel, it is 20 megabytes, am I right? Yeah, but it doesn't include the node modules. Um, uh -huh. And, and, um, and or that. So um, let's get the properties on that. Four megabytes. Four oh, megabytes. Okay. Whereas node modules itself is, this is why you don't usually put it in your uh, GitLab. Um, you don't need to because some other people can simply say NPM I and the whole thing shows up. Uh -huh. But 73 megabytes just for that. That's, um, I think that you did check in node modules. You don't need to check in bin or node modules or package lock. You do want to check in package. Uh, the reason, uh, the way you avoid that is you um, add a git ignore, dot git ignore file to your scene. You can get a copy of one from my scene base. Yes. I, I remember it from one if you of put, those, And if you, if you were to put that in your scene before the first time you do a push, um, or be, for, um, before the last time you do a, uh, a commit before the first push, then this stuff would not, that, all that big stuff wouldn't go up there. But it's not, it's not, not the end of the world. Uh, we're fine here. So um, uh, I guess the next thing to do is try running it. Um, This is this is this is strange. Huh? The enter you can enter inside the house from the uh, just go on the right. Now look at the left. Stop. This is the you can enter in here. Just enter. Now mm -hmm. you are inside. What what does it mean? <laughs> and when I'm and now if you will open uh, the game TS in uh, I don't know in. The, uh huh. And save um, it. And click and click here. Control S. I'm going to actually um, even go more. I just I made it dirty by just adding a space and moving it. Control S. And now you can. Everything is normal. Um, there certainly are things that weren't showing before. Yep. You have glass. Yeah. Um, that is uh, quite unusual. 
Let's see if I, you know what? I, I'm just going to, I'm going to remove the, uh, the, you know, first I'm going to see what version of the last one. 6.4.2. Um, I've just made it 10, 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. 6.4.2 is a version of the Decentraland ECS um, package you're using, which is pretty new, I think. Uh, view Decentraland ECS versions. I'm just going to see what versions exist out there. 6.4.2 got released. Um, sometime on or after the 27th, which was yesterday. I think that usually what they do is the very last one of their experimental interim releases that they do, they just turn into, so it was probably this one that was released, it was the last of several that were released on the 27th. <coughs> the same problem. When did you, did you pro when, go ahead. And the same problem was uh, several days ago. Okay. Uh, before, before this release. Um, how far back? I, I don't remember. Just um, two days ago. Twelve days ago. Two, two, two days ago. Two or three days ago. So, you were probably using six four one then. Let's just for grins try going back a little bit further. I don't. I've never seen this problem, so I, it's a little dubious. It has to do with that. Let's see. If, let me look in your scene. Um, it's the behavior of the models. Oh. They are not all inside my scene, just two of two of them. Um, Maybe this is the problem. You can you can remove uh, the second one, the third one. These aren't square. I don't know that that should matter, but um, let's let's try. And you're saying if I just reload this, it'll go back to being gray, right? Uh huh. Oh, I killed it already. Uh, so, are these GLBs or GLTFs? I forgot. Uh, oh, these are just materials yeah, you're applying yeah, yeah. to just, just, uh, primitives. Yes, just pictures. Yes. Uh, they're in your, but you have them in the models directory, but that's that's not a problem. So in your source code, which we are actually looking at over here, you have you want to find these pictures inside the code, yeah? You just have to, to you just go just at the bottom, at the very bottom of the code. Uh-huh, yeah, just a bit up. I was just looking to see if there was an error in the code here. Sometimes um, everything after an error doesn't work. Uh, sometimes the, the code will run all the way down. In the, in the scene, it'll actually run all the way down to where the syntax errors, and it'll stop working after that. So texture, albedo, so this looks good. Let's, um, what was one of the ones here that uh, is easy to see that it doesn't work? Uh, this one. Uh, it's glass. It's at the beginning. It's material. Doesn't work at all. No materials work, I suppose. Um, Just where's, add the, where's no, your at, glass? At the top. At the top. At the very top. Glass. Alpha blend. Um, oh, interesting. 0 0.3 alpha, huh? So it's just a little bit not, not quite fully transparent. So you can see it as a glass. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, dark glass is even less transparent. Um, and by the but, way, I but those but those aren't using textures, are they? They're just no, no textures, no textures. And they're also not working. So my theory that the problem was that the images are not are not valid uh, squares is apparently but images, irrelevant. but you can see images. Well, if you update the scene, you will mm -hmm. see everything 
Uh, you yep. you yeah. will see images, but no uh, this, materials. Very mysterious. Um, I wonder if they, if it was something, excuse me. Um, I'm just swinging in the dark here. I'm just trying to just make sure that I have a nice clean installation of the ECS here. Same version you were using, right? 642. These are windows here. Is that correct? Uh -huh. I would see it. I would see it right off. Interestingly, I do see that. I see your images. I just don't see the materials that are specified in um, in code like um, these ones here, right? Yeah. But the ones down here, they are working. Is that correct? Uh, so sorry. The ones, the, the ones that are based on images, they are working from the beginning, I think. Um, Metropolis. Uh, yeah, that, I've got. Um, you have Metropolis, you have. I have a box shape with a texture, and these are pictures. Blade Runner. And Blade Runner, yeah. Two pictures. Yeah, just those two, right? And they are showing up, so it's not yes. all materials. It has something to do with the materials that have Alpha blend. Huh. That's interesting. Do all the ones that don't show up? No. Um, let me just close this and reopen it so I'll, I'll stop having syntax errors there. Distracting me slightly. I reloaded the uh, Decentraland ECS module, and, and in the, for a moment there was none in game, and uh, code got confused because I couldn't find the stuff. Um, a touch of blue. Okay, that's nice. Um, I'm going to wonder if the if the problem is this transparency mode thing. Uh, for, it was an uh, it was an uh, has alpha uh, has alpha uh, true at the beginning, but when I updated the ECS, uh, I've uh, I had a problem with that. And inside the SDK chat, inside the decentral and Discord decentral, and there was a talk about it. And they said just uh, has alpha now is not. Oh, excuse working. me, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm very distracted with the fact I'm getting a call from work. Can you guys just hold on a second?
Mr. Carl, sorry, couldn't grab it. And uh, do you have uh, evidence that the problem is fixed? Very good. Thank you. You're confident that it's unrelated? going to send out a message explaining that one is fixed and the other is broken? Um, I think one would be okay. Same people need to know, I would think. Maybe, maybe less for the bell chase one. Yeah, but boat, boat folks sometimes call... Uh, Just hey folks, I'm going to be a couple of minutes. I'm going to mute my mic here. Hey everybody, I apologize. Uh, that was an emergency at work. And uh, since I'm the director of IT there, uh, I do get calls like that. So uh, everything's okay. Um, and I'm back, can you hear me? Am I audible? Okay. Uh, going back to looking at this, um, Really interesting, Class 3 metallic. I'm just wondering if some of these materials are the, are the especially the culprit. Um, Sorry, I've lost connection for a second. Okay. I'm and I'm back. I, I think you can hear me. Um, I was just wondering if there's some particular things here that that it really doesn't like in when it's when it's doing a uh, full reload, but under hot reload, it's okay. It's uh, I would think that the the problem would be more likely to be seen on a hot reload, but that's not what you're seeing. It's very strange. So there's something about these materials. Um, where are these materials used? Um, in uh, everywhere. If you, <clears throat> there, yeah. I use them in rules, many places. Yeah, in switchers, in uh, lift uh, buttons, and everywhere. Yes. Uh, I'm going to be so bold as to actually just see if the problem is the color four uh, and/or and alpha blend stuff. You see what I'm doing here? I'm making this a color three. It should just be um, a little, a little bit blue, dark blue. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, I 
And you say there was, was there something else about transparency up above? Or is that, I think so what I've... I, at, for, first of all, I had um, glass dot has alpha equals true. But when I updated the decentralized ES, ECS, uh, there was, uh, uh, there were an error at that place. And in the Discord SDK channel, I've seen that this is commonplace and they've changed something with it. And they uh, said that I should put inside my code this glass dot transparency mode equals transparency mode and alpha blend just to make it work. And it worked. Oh, instead of two, huh? Yeah. It is. Yes. I'm going to just, rem I'm just going to comment comment out things that are kind of unusual, that basically things I haven't used before. Emissive, um, anything about transparency. Uh, these guys uh, look fine. Nothing unusual here. I'm just going to... Uh, I'm going to do a Control F5 to reload it. Let's see if they again go back to gray. And they sure do. Um, whereas if I just touch the file and save it, then It reloads with colors, uh, those things showing. So I don't think it has anything to do with um, these guys because they're not in the picture anymore. So let me put them back. They're not the problem. The other thing is, uh, since entity, I'm just looking through the scene to see if I see anything at all that looks. Maybe there is a problem with a lift because the second problem is a problem with a lift, and maybe it's just the root of the both problems. Where is it? Uh, maybe just you will get inside the scenes where I will show you the problem and then I will show you what is okay. inside the code or just vice versa. Like, I don't know what will be the right way. It's a beautiful scene. Thanks. So just get inside the left. No, it's not. Uh, it's, yeah, there. No, 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 no. On the right. On the right. No, back. Yes, in here. this. Here. Just go on the right. Okay. Do I press one of these buttons? Uh-oh. I lost your audio there for a second. What do I do? Uh, just step outside a bit. So I will... Yeah. And here on the left, you have this uh, square. This is the leaf getter. And on each floor, I have this getter. And when I uh, click on it, uh, you will see the lift uh, on this particular floor. It's just a button to get wow. on the floor. But uh, so it works everywhere. But a lift is not moving; it's just appearing near the floor. So just step inside the lift, inside on on this platform, inside the lift, and you have these five uh, spheres. These are buttons to get on some of the floor. You can just pick one. I don't know, pick one. Now you are moving. Now you're on the f uh, on the second floor, and the problem is that uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, to code it just uh, so that you will have the opportunity to move from one floor to another just uh, just step by step. But it is but it is impossible right now. Just just click something else. I don't know fifth floor or fifth floor or fourth floor. Nothing it happens. Uh -huh. Nothing. But just click the first one. Now and it suddenly you, goes there. <laughs> you, 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 you fall down. Yeah. Uh, and this is the problem. 
I've tried it several ways. Sometimes it works a bit strange. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. So there is some some kind of a problem. Now you can look inside the coder and I will show you what do I have inside the code. What is not working maybe. Uh, so no, these are just walls and columns and etc. Just to uh, move it uh, down. So, uh, these are walls. This, oh, here is the lift. So this is the, oh no, this is not the lift. This is lift walls, just a bit. This is the lift. No, 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 a bit up. This is the lift. Uh, these are first, second, third, fourth, and fifth floor uh, positions. This is the lift platform. And this is the app component. Uh, oh no, no, this is the uh, let transform lift platform, lift platform, get component. So this, this is what I call when I want to change the position of the platform. Is it, is it, is it okay? Am I right doing this? <laughs> So just let, let me show you the whole picture. This is this is the uh, um, then we have lift getters. Let me let me just see it. So these are the locations of the of the three floors with their different y axes here. I see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then this is the platform you stand on, and yeah. initially you're give you're telling it to be on the first floor. Yes. And the getter says, "Come to me." Yeah, the getter says, "Come to me." This to um, change the platform position. Um, but all the getters are working well. This is, I suppose, this is not the problem with the getters. Just okay. a bit further. A bit, yeah, here we have lift uh, setters. These are just one of my, uh, uh, I don't know how to say, just not good uh, examples of what, what I was doing. This is so the this, lift this set is the one, one that's currently currently running. Yeah, this is the first button, lift set one, and I have five buttons. And I have add component or replace on click, and I have else, uh, uh, if and else if, and I want my code to check where am I standing, and if I am standing there, I should go there. This and I'm using utils move transform component, so I want my on click to check if I am on the second floor. I will go from the second floor to the first floor within two seconds. If I'm on the third floor, I will go from the third floor to the first floor within four seconds. And so on. But something, something's not working. And I can't understand what is not working. I have add component or replace. I have, I am changing the position after, after the, the maybe it's, maybe I shouldn't have done that or something. And I, I'm trying to set this position inside the else if and outside the else if and uh, everywhere i tried everything <laughs> but something's not working why are you making this call here at the end hmm? uh lift position position this first i don't floor. know why i'm doing this i just I just, just a second was... this is the this is the Handler for the button that says go to the first floor. Yeah. No. Uh, I can. You can delete it. And uh, so the main. This is just one of my. Um, I tried this, but I failed also. The main code is is if and else if. So if. I, my, my concern, my concern is this thing right here. Each time it says, "Just go jump to the first floor." Why do you have because, this line here? I don't know. I I just tried to make it work, but you can delete it, and oh, it, will, it won't work. Also, <laughs> yeah, you can delete it, but um, you can try. Um, what's the comma? I'm, I'm, I'm confused by syntax. So one, two. Let's see. What? There's a comma here. You don't need. Um. I'm not that uh, good in syntax floor. because I, I, know, I don't know JavaScript. I don't know TypeScript. Let's move to. Yes, um, I haven't used Util, so I don't know. When you, when you replace it with this thing, I don't know. Does it just run at that time? Maybe somebody knows. 
Uh, does that just in two seconds, just because you add this, it just goes ahead and does that. Um, uh, but which are you, you have some different uh, lift ones and lift two, lift three. Lift, is this like for each floor? It's for each button. For each button, right, okay. So, um, and these guys go to third floor, third floor. Yeah, and different amounts of time. That that, all right. So, I'm understanding everything about this except for two things. I let me uh, make a copy of this and comment out your this version. This is your. This is where we're starting with. I'm I'm going to hide that, and I'm going to try just for grins, deleting that comma and that thing that says go to the first floor suddenly, because that's what you're seeing. It's suddenly going to the first floor because you're telling it to. After, after setting up this thing that can make it go slowly, you say just go to the first floor. And the comma, it's an interesting piece. Of, and then also, I think you don't need this, because that will also tell it to go to the first floor. Yes. So let's, Let's try um, now whether or not in the scene. Um, I suppose it can be hard to understand just removing it from only one. But it does now not do anything. No, I yes. I wonder if you have to trigger this utility. I've never used this thing. Um, I'm going to the definition of it. Um, optional on interpolation type is linear. That's, uh, so you have two optional parameters at the end, but three that are required. So, um, vector three, vector three, and how long it takes to do it. And Yeah, I don't know if, what it takes to trigger a, one of these transform components to actually do its thing. Um, just placing it in the, um, excuse me, just placing it in. I'm sorry, I'm not that familiar with it. Does anybody know? It doesn't seem like it is. So this is the, this is the one that if I click the first button, this is what should happen, right? Uh-huh. It lifts it, add component replace. The oh. button is checking on which floor you are standing right now and moving you from that floor to the first floor uh, within two, four, six, or eight seconds. Yes, this this code looks good to me. Uh, I'll see if transfer. If... Maybe there's some problem with this add component yeah. for replace. Uh, just uh, maybe take a look at the lift platform above. How far up? Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, these are getters. Uh, a bit further. Yeah, this is it. A little platform. So these are five of, uh, positions, and this is the. Maybe something uh, is wrong with this. Let transform with platform with platform different. Uh, or maybe something is wrong with this position first floor inside the transform, or something. 
I don't know. <laughs> Where's the documentation on the utilities? This is, uh, it's, uh, I don't remember. Um, I think it's you a can package, see, right? Yeah, I think you can see in the chat uh, here in uh, Zoom, and you will find. You will find there some link from I don't remember. Yeah, I see one here that's. Um... Yes, and you can take a look uh, just uh, a bit uh, a bit, uh, at the top. Yeah, and there is this move, no, yeah, move an entity, move an entity. And here is this, uh, yeah, this is a move transform. Uh -huh. It's a bit simple from the first glance. You just have start position. You have end position on seconds moving from one to another. That's all. But here there is an add component. And you're replacing it. Um, from but, but I'm replacing because I need to move from one to another, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth. Mm -hmm. And your code. Um, First, there was a uh, left set one add component new on click. Yeah, change it to add component or replace. I don't know. I don't know why, but it doesn't change anything. Else. Um, if add component works, add component replace works. But uh, add component replace might be because you you are replacing the the position. You're replacing the. the um, Move component. Hmm. Are there any sample utilities? Um, let's go see. Sorry, I, I haven't heard. You have just disappeared for five seconds. No, you didn't hear me. I was asking uh, if there's any new sample scenes that show the use of these utilities. Um, there is just a simple uh, example. Uh, yes, there is one somewhere uh, uh, at the bottom, but this is. Uh, it is just moving from one point to another and then stops. And if you will see at the at our sandbox, there is one example about it, just an egg moving from one point to another. I suppose this is insane details. Yes. But it's just from this point to this point, and that's all, without further um, movements. Yes, although if you click the egg, it, it does run it again. Yes. But I need that each that this for if, if if we use this egg example, I want this egg. Uh, uh, the sec I want the second move to start from the second position of the egg. So, it's, mm -hmm. if you understand. Me. And your code looks like it would do that. Because you're saying Maybe. each time you know go from where you where you are, transfer lift platform is the second floor, then go from the second floor to the first floor. Does this, I have, I maybe I have a guess, it's just not a guess. Maybe this move transform component doesn't change component because I've, I've saw somewhere in the documentation there is, there is some, some problem with these components because they are not always changing, they are just staying the same, but you can see that they are changed something very strange and I, I didn't get it, but maybe this move transform component doesn't change them from the beginning and something. Yes. 
I can see. Uh, uh, have you ever have, have you ever used the Lerp? Um, no, I I I, I, I this this thing is using is using a Lerp uh, inside it. I'm wondering if maybe what you want to do is try to code it using raw Lerp behavior. In other words, you're just moving that thing as opposed to. Um, I'm yeah. not sure I'm that good at coding to. <laughs> to I haven't use used the it. Uh, the... There was there was another problem at the very beginning when I wrote this. There was another problem. I can check every bottom or every every button, uh, but for for example, I'm inside the lift at the first floor. I'm I'm uh, I'm using the fourth button. I'm going up. If I'm using the fifth button, I'm going up and everything is okay. But when I'm uh, using third button, when I'm on the fifth floor, first of all, I'm falling down to the first floor and then I'm going up to the third floor. <laughs> this was just something yeah. strange. Which, 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 which one were you just talking about? The third, starting at which floor? Uh, it, uh, from the third floor. And I that would be that, maybe, that would be that maybe there uh, is something problem in this utils because there is the start position and the end position and maybe it doesn't move it doesn't work with three positions or something maybe it's too 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 uh, I don't know do you do, do you understand my point no um, yeah sort of oh, what I'm I was looking at you said <laughs> did you ever see of movement. The one that was working is, is if you're on the first floor, you click the second, in, any of them, you go up properly, right? Yes. And when, when you get the lift from every floor you want, maybe, for example, you are on the third floor, you are getting the lift, and it works just to move somewhere for the one step. And that's all. I don't understand. Something is not... Uh, the component is not changing as something. Just take a look at the getters. They are I'm, I'm going to I'm going to put your code back and comment out the one that I started to, to mess around with here. Right. These these are the buttons that move you to a new place, right? These lift sets are, are the ones that run the elevator up and down in various combinations. Okay, so you, you, I'm you going to... You can delete this. Uh... Oops, I didn't mean to click it. So let me reload this scene. I think you're saying that it always works okay the very first time that you run it. No, not okay. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it was... Um very uh very close to working okay <laughs> but not that okay <laughs> and not with this code it was just somewhere i just don't even remember what was the exact code at the beginning because this 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 code is i don't know the fifth or the sixth uh, version i don't know i've just tried and tried and tried all right so i think that uh if i go to the second floor if i can get there And call the elevator, it should come, right? Yeah. I walk in here and I click third floor. It works, but only once. Go to the fourth floor, nothing happens, right? First floor, nothing yeah. happens. First, no, first floor, the you first floor the always elevator. throws you to the bottom. I think that's because you have this in here that it throws you to the bottom every time. So let me just comment this out. It says, on click. Else do that. It says, do one of these things and then jump to the bottom floor. <laughs> so I'm just going to copy that one out. You don't have that on your other second floor. No, I have it. But no, it no, says but not jump not to the second floor. Oh, no, I have just removed it. Uh, yeah, it was yes, just... Uh, but not outside the test. 
here you have Um, okay, I'm starting just by coming, commenting that out. Um, <laughs> stuck in here, right? Let me, I'm going to reload the scene, then I'm going to go out of this, out, and go back yeah, and reload. Yeah. Good. It is pretty funny when when I was making steers, I got stuck several times inside the steers after the uploading, after the refreshing this. Saved, reloads. Looks like it always works. It looks, it's looking to me like it works the first time you press one of the round buttons. And then after that, the only thing that was working and is now no longer working is falling to the first floor instantly. Yes. Uh, on the first button. You, so you can, you can change it just uh, with the uh, second click on the get list. And it will once again work on the start, but just on the ones. Oops, I was already kind of in the right place here. Oh, uh, yes, I want to go up the stairs. Go up the stairs. Do you have uh, uh, tra invisible things here to keep you from falling off the stairs? No. Okay. Something to consider maybe doing. Did that, did those buttons jump? Sorry? All right, so I went to the second floor and I was able to go to the third floor, but nothing nothing after that. So going back here and just looking. Just click, no, just click once again on the ghetto. And then just try once again to move some. No. You are on the, no, you are on the third floor. On okay, so let me go. Let me just try this again. Do the getter. Because I did click. So go to the second floor. Mm -hmm. Ah. It's clearing up something. Yes, it's refreshing. But there is add component. Uh, add or replace component. Oh, no, it's just not add. Uh, look at the gather. It's up. So. Yeah. It gets on different floors. So it, um, we were on the third floor and it worked. So it, it, it works every time. There is a transform lift platform dot position uh, equals third floor. So I call I calls the uh, transform lift platform variable or I don't know. And that this is the right. It's in the lift platform code uh, above. I'm sorry, I was reading this. I wasn't. Let me just absorb this a little bit more. Creating you. Were, this is simply creating that rectangular button. Yeah. Um. Yes, it's just the button, and uh, the, the interesting. And what it does is it just instantly sets it to the position to the third floor. Um, and then the, uh, 
Um, I think the call I got was somebody was is trying to use the Zoom meeting, and I've given them permission to use it at this time. Um, can I have a one-on-one -on -one chat with you and see if we can go into this further? Like through Discord? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. All righty. Let me close the meeting here. I thank, thank everybody, and uh, good luck on the game jam. And uh, I'll catch you in, in chat in Discord in a moment. Okay, thank you.